हेलो एवरी वन आई एम जानवी परदेशी आई एम फ्रॉम बी कॉम टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट द पार्किसन्स डिजीज प्रडिक्शन प्रोजेक्ट इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट आई हैव यूज बेसिक पाइथन लाइब्रेरीज द फर्स्ट लाइब्रेरी विच आई हैव यूज फॉर दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज पांडाज लाइब्रेरीज दिस लाइब्रेरी हेल्प्स टू लोड द डेटा इन टू द डेटा फ्रेम दैट इज इन द टू डी आर ए फॉर्मैट मीन्स इन द फॉर्मैट ऑफ रोज एंड कॉलम्स This Pandas library consists of multiple functions, which is used to read the data, load the data. The second library is NumPy library. NumPy stands for Numerical Python. This NumPy library consists of multi-dimensional arrays, and these multi-dimensional arrays are useful for performing the complex computations. Now. With the help of NumPy library, these complex computations are performed in a very short period of time. The third library which I have used is Matplot library. Matplot library is used for data visualization. It is also used to plot different kind of graphs. These are the algorithms which I have used. The first algorithm is random forest algorithm. Second is K N N algorithm, that is K nearest neighbor algorithm, and the third is S V M algorithm, that is support vector machine algorithm. Now we will take a look onto the data set. This is the official website of the Kaggle. From this website, we can search for any data set and we can download or use it for the projects this is the option for down for searching and downloading the data set this is the parkinson's disease data set here is the csv file and we can download this csv file from this option as you can see there are 195 number of rows present in this data set and 24 number of columns are present in the in this data set right now here only 10 columns are selected that's why it's showing 10 of 24 selected if you want you can click on all the check boxes so that all the columns will get added into your csv file this is the data set now we will take a look on to the main code of the project this is the main code which i have written in the jupyter notebook in python language in the very first we have to import the necessary libraries for the project as i have explained earlier i am going to use three libraries numpy pandas and matplot library so all these libraries are included here then the data which we have downloaded that we have to load in this code so this is the read csv is the function which is present in the pandas library pd dot read csv and the file path is given here the next function is df dot head the head function will print the first five rows of the data set df dot tell tell function will return the last five rows of the data set then df dot shape shape is a function which will return the number of rows and the number of columns in the data set as i have told you that there are 195 number of rows present in the data set and 24 number of columns are present in the data set df dot describe now describe is a function which will return the statistical measure of the data that means it will return the count mean standard deviation the minimum value maximum value from the data set then next is df dot is na dot sum 
This function will return the number of null values present in the data set. As you can see our data is clean, there are no null values present in our data set. That's why it's representing zeros in front of each column name. Next, I have imported the Seaborn library. Import Seaborn as SMS. And with the help of Seaborn library, I have plotted the heat map. Now heat map is basically used to show the correlation between the columns. This is very helpful for selecting the features. Which features are going to affect our prediction that will be going to decide with the help of heat map. As you can see, the columns which are present here will have the highest correlation factor. This is one and the color is also same. Based on this heat map, we have decided that these columns will be responsible for the prediction. So we have created the new data frame of consisting of these columns. x equal to new date and we are going to print that x. And in the y, this is a dependent variable, the status. That means, as you can see, the status is in the form of binary values. If the status is representing the 1, then it, it will return that the person has Parkinson's disease. If it's showing 0, the person may not have the Parkinson's disease. After dividing our data set into the dependent and independent variables, now we are going to divide or split the data into the training and testing part. So this is the code for splitting the data into training and testing part. Here the test size is written as 0.2. Now if the test size is 0.2, it is indicating that 80% of the data will be used for the training purpose and 20% of the data will be used for testing purpose. As I have explained, I have used three algorithms, random forest algorithm, KNN algorithm and SVM algorithm. This is the code for random forest algorithm. RF is the classifier in which the function is, this function is used. X train and Y train, these two training data are fitted to this RF model. Y pred RF, in this variable, the predicted values of the random forest are stored. After that, the accuracy score is displayed. So, the accuracy score of the random forest is this. And this is the code for confusion matrix after that the classification report is displayed the classification report consists of precision recall f1 score accuracy averages etc this is the random forest algorithm now we will move on to the knn algorithm knn stands for k nearest neighbor algorithm it is a supervised machine learning algorithm. It classifies the new data point based on the similarities. So classifier is the model which we have initialized. X train and Y train, these two training data are fitted to this classifier model. Y pred KNN is the variable in which the predicted values are stored. And the accuracy score of the KNN model is displayed. The, this is the accuracy of the KNN model. 
then the next algorithm is SVM algorithm SVM stands for support vector machine algorithm this algorithm is basically used for classification and regression type of problems SVM algorithm is used to create the best decision boundary between the n dimensional spaces into the classes this is the code for SVM algorithm SVC is a classifier which we have defined and training and testing data is fitted to this SVC classifier after that YPRED SVM this variable will store the predicted values of the SVM model and the accuracy score of the SVM model is displayed this is the accuracy score now we have implemented three algorithms after implementing the algorithms we have to save the trained model for this we have to import the pickle library the file name will save the name of this file and then this saved model will be loaded <coughs> Now we will move on to the front end code. This is the spider platform which you can download from the Anaconda Navigator. This is the code for front end. Here I have imported the NumPy library and Streamlit library and Pickle library. We are going to load the saved model here. This is the prediction function so here the input array is converted into the numpy array and this numpy array will be reshaped if the prediction is 0 then it will display that the person is not suffering from the Parkinson's disease if it is not equal to 0, then it will return that the person may have the Parkinson's disease, consult your doctor. Then this is the main function. The title of the our web page will be Parkinson prediction. And these are the input values. These input values will be entered by the user. Here the call is given to the main function. You can run this file by clicking on this option, run file. After running the file, you will get the message that you have to type this command into your browser. Now you have to copy this command you have to open the home page of the anaconda navigator click on the environments here click on the machine learning and open terminal this will open the terminal you have to paste this code and you have to press enter And your web page will automatically opened in the default browser the front end will look like this here the values you have to enter now here on this web page I have entered some random values now we will predict it's predicting that the person may have the Parkinson's disease consult your doctor so in this way I have made this project I hope this video will help you thank you I am attaching the github link where I have uploaded this code and along with the github link I am 
also attaching the data set link from where you can download the data set thank you